Hello there and welcome to Medical Mondays. I'm Dr. Watson. I'm a Gen Z doctor who says smart and dumb things pertaining to medicine. And today we're going to be talking about what the heck I'm going to do for my path in life. So if you watch the live reaction of my match day results, like where I ended up matching, I basically just said it's internal medicine and then ran away. And I immediately drove four hours to where I'm going to be doing my residency, like literally that day, like probably within the hour I packed and went. And if you don't know, I've always wanted surgery. So I think that I went into everything very optimistically and probably to a naive point. So that's why I kind of wanted to do like a more informal video and just kind of talking to the camera. And if you're wondering if this is a good idea, no. Will my program coordinator like this? No. But I just wanted to be transparent about, you know, this whole process and kind of where my mind's at because I've been honest about everything else. And I think I was pretty naive to really be expecting that I would get surgery. I only had uh, three categorical interviews and one prelim interview. But for some reason, I just really felt like I was going to get one of them. And then when I didn't, it almost felt kind of personal just because I talked to a lot of the program directors. I met them in person. We I went to the second looks, I had dinner with them, and you know, it felt like they got to know me more as a person and the interviews seemed to go well. So whenever I didn't get picked by any of them, it felt like, what's wrong with me, you know? And it is kind of a weird feeling because I matched into internal medicine and that's definitely not a bad specialty, but it's just not what I thought would happen. And I mostly put internal medicine because it's kind of like the every IMG's nightmare to not match at all. So rather than trying to soap into a prelim, I put internal medicine, but I really didn't think that was going to happen. I thought I would get the one prelim position or the prelim of the categorical places that I interviewed with. So when that didn't happen, I just felt very shocked for a while. If you hear any click clacking, that's Nico in the background. So now I'm just gonna kind of talk about my three options basically from here on. So number one, I finish out my internal medicine, get board certified in that, and then apply for surgery again. Number two, apply for surgery again next year even though I haven't finished internal medicine. Or number three, except that I'm just going to do internal medicine and potentially apply to a fellowship. So for number one, I'm kind of leaning towards that now just because I feel like it shows commitment and I was just planning on being uh, completely honest with my program coordinator from day one, like, hey, I, I know that I got accepted to internal medicine, but honestly, I was kind of hoping for surgery and I honor my commitments and I'm hoping that because I'm honoring those commitments that maybe you connect me with the right people. Uh, it is with a giant like hospital branch so I feel like if I were to be like given certain opportunities like be able to see procedures and assist then that would give me a better opportunity whenever I do apply at the end. Option number two is a lot more risky because basically that means okay you were given this opportunity to finish out a residency and then you're board certified and you know once you're board certified in something no matter what you're going to be a fully licensed practicing physician and if I do option number two, then maybe I would just get a prelim position and maybe I would just end up being in prelim positions over and over again, which does happen. There are a lot of people that do three prelim years and then they never get their surgery and then they end up going into internal medicine or family medicine anyways. So if I do option number one, it might end up being that I kind of do it backwards, like I do internal medicine and then I do like two prelim years and then I never end up getting surgery. So one and two are kind of a gamble, but one and two would ultimately be pushing forward towards hopefully my career as a surgeon. And then option number three is I accept that, okay, I'm just going to do internal medicine and I might fall in love with it throughout my three years of training. And then potentially I either become a hospitalist or I do a clinic. I don't really see that for myself. Or I do a very procedure heavy uh, internal medicine fellowship like GI or cardiology and I mean I've always had a love for the ICU so I definitely am not ruling out like neurocritical care, pulmonology and critical care, like there are a lot of things that you can do in the critical care world that I really do enjoy but as of right now everything is just kind of you know undecided, unofficial and that's definitely the first feeling that I felt whenever I got my match results I was just kind of like okay now what? It kind of just felt like, I felt like if I had matched into surgery, then my future would have been planned, it would have been set. But now because I either potentially have three extra years or four extra years if I have to do three years and then a prelim, now I'm kind of like, 
I have no idea what's going to happen and nothing's guaranteed at this point. The only thing that's guaranteed is if I choose option number one and I get board certified in internal medicine and then potentially get board certified in surgery, which I don't see many negatives to that because it would be really great to be maybe someone's primary care and their surgeon, especially if I'm in rural areas and I've always wanted to travel and help people. So it'd be great if I could go to a like a rural village and uh, whenever, like I, whenever I was in DR, I could go to places like that and really, really help people. But yeah, as of right now, I really haven't given up on becoming a surgeon and I'm trying to make sure that I keep my contacts and I make sure that I keep my research going and I just try my best to keep my head up and don't get discouraged. I mean, I think this is a great opportunity to develop as a physician and a person because let's say I do finish out my three years or even one year, I do feel like I will be way more confident, confident in my abilities as a physician and my interview skills and you know what I bring to the table. And I think that will help a lot with whenever I hopefully end up applying. I mean, who knows? I, I Like I said, there's a lot of things that I love in medicine. I just don't picture myself doing medicine. I picture myself doing surgery, but who knows? And also a part of me, you know, as someone that wasn't raised by my parents, I do have self-worth issues that I have to work on. And I don't know if maybe one of the big parts of me wanting to be a surgeon is because I can't just be a physician. I can't just be whatever doctor. I have to be a surgeon because those are the most prestigious. And I don't know if that's me and my self-worth issues and I just have to be this big thing or, I mean, or if that's just part of it or if I genuinely like really want to do it a thousand percent and no matter how many years I'm going to make sure that I do it or I don't know. But yeah, thanks for listening to my rant. If you have any questions, if you know anyone that's been down the same road, if you have any advice, suggestions, if you want me to talk more about this and my thoughts, I'm, I'm definitely going to be continuing to update you guys. I'm going to be doing vlogs whenever I am, you know, doing internal medicine. I'm excited to treat patients and I'm excited that where I am going, it is like pretty rural. There's not a lot of hospitals in the area. Am I, am I saying that right? Urban? I don't know. I always get them confused. I'm excited that the patient population at the hospital that I'm going to has a wide variety of pathologies. You know, it's people that might not have great access to healthcare. So we're kind of the front line and I'm excited because, you know, places like where I'm at right now, everyone has, or not everyone, but a good amount of people have access to healthcare. So you're kind of just doing a lot of primary care but with where I will be, it seems like a lot of people really need help. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to establish patients. And I mean, honestly, I'm kind of scared about like running codes and everything. Cause as a, as a surgery resident, you don't really have to, but as an internal medicine resident, you do have to run the codes. And I feel like there is a lot of responsibility for internal medicine residents that I wasn't really preparing for. And now I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta get my head in the game. So now I'm thinking about that, but make sure to tune into the next Medical Monday video and I'll see you next time. Bye.